violent protests have rocked Sudan, despite a power-sharing agreement reversing last month's army coup. The ousted Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok is returning to lead a new cab cabinet overseen by the military, but the main opposition alliance says it won't work with the army. Smoke billowed from the streets of Khartoum as hundreds of protesters spilled into the city. They gathered after Sudan's military signed a deal with ousted Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok that will see him reinstated. Police forces responded with tear gas. Demonstrators opposed the military's involvement in politics. They say this new arrangement does not represent them. During this protest, you can hear us saying that the revolution is for the people, power is for the people, and the military should go back to their barracks. We want the exclusion of the military from the political process and we want a purely civilian government. His willingness to sit down with the killers is a betrayal of our revolution. Sudan has been in turmoil ever since the military seized control in a coup in October. For weeks, protesters have been taking to the streets to oppose the takeover. Dozens died in clashes with police and military forces. Hamdok was released from house arrest shortly before signing the deal. He will lead a new civilian cabinet until elections are held. However, it is unclear how much power he will actually have. This agreement comes about as the result of the work from the last three or four weeks of those who care for this nation, as well as our regional and international allies. We would like to express our gratitude to everyone who contributed to this. But here on the streets, his thanks fall on deaf ears. Protesters will keep pushing for Sudan free of military rule. And we can go over to Khartoum now, where I'm joined by the journalist Naba Mohideen. It's good to see you, uh, Naba. Um, can you perhaps tell us a little bit more about why protesters and pro-democracy groups are not happy with the deal to reinstate Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok? Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, to be clear, the protesters are not uh, sad or angry because Abdullah Hamdok is reinstated. They are sad because of the conditions and the time that Abdullah Hamdok is reinstated. For example, one week ago, um, the main demand was to reinstate Abdullah Hamdok and his cabinet. Um, but after the mass protest and the violence, the excessive violence against the protesters, where 40 protesters were killed uh, in, the, in the last week, 17 were killed in one, one street or one city, the demands are changed now. And the statement of Abdullah Hamdok in this time for, for the protesters is just a political incubator and a political facade for the military or kind of immunity. So people are angry and they think Abdullah Hamdok is betraying uh, mm. the December revolution and betraying the victims of the protest after great sacrifices were, were offered and um, were, were done by the protesters and pro-democracy group. Other thing is, uh, for the, from the second day after the military takeover, the pro-democracy groups and uh, political parties, they had a slogan saying there is no partnership, there is no negotiation right. with the military, and there is no way to get back. So, yeah, Abdullah mm. Hamdok now, for the pro-democracy pro groups and political parties, it's just giving immunity for the military take uh, over and more recognition right. by the international community. And, and just having listened to him there, he's talking about uh, avoiding more bloodshed, uh, avoiding for, for a situation where more young people are, are being killed. So it, it depends really how, how you want to see things there. But what kind of a, a working relationship do you expect between Hamdok uh, and his military supervisors effectively in, in this new government arrangement, given all that has happened? Actually, avoiding uh, blood or avoiding killing is something, uh, it's not logical. And uh, for the protesters, it's not uh, an excuse to sit with the same people who are accused, accused with, with the massive uh, 
a killing or or violence. So avoiding it is there is no guarantee so that this scenario will be repeated because if this partnership is successful, the military wouldn't take the power and uh, blow with all of the democracy gains in one day, uh, as we saw on October 25th. So for the protesters, this is an excuse. And actually, they are expecting right. more violence under the under, under the protection of a civilian military uh, partnership, because now it's a recognized uh, government mm. and it's, uh, it's a recognized um, a recognized military takeover, uh, if we can say this. And for the protesters, okay. uh, the situation is darker. And it's uh, darker, and they are expecting a very, a very bad and fragile situation. All right, Naba, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you uh, for talking to us. That's the journalist Naba Moedin uh, in Khartoum.